can't wait to read about the game Hattie was playing in the backyard. Your question today is, what game was Hattie and Angel playing in the backyard? Hi guys, I'm Madison Hall. I'm your 2018 Cold Creek Queen and I'm going to be reading chapter 9 for you guys. Later I'm out in our dog park, scratching my ear when I spy a despicable squirrel, and then another, even bigger than the first. The two odious rodents are chasing each other through the grass, where they know they don't belong. I spring to my feet, their fluffy tails are waving and taunting. I race after them, watching them disappear into a nearby shrub. Do they actually think they can hide from me? Well, they're about to learn a very big lesson. No squirrels allowed, I bark, thrusting my snout into the shrubby foliage. Do you hear me? But obviously they, they don't. They're tumbling and battling, spitting and screeching at each other, chipper chatter squawk. I've got you now, I bark, plunging in deeper. The shrub crackles and rustles. The squirrels scamper out the back and scoot across the dog, dog park. Do they think they can escape? Ha, you can't outsmart me, I bark. I back out of the shrub, shaking leaves off my coat. The two nasty vermin chase each other through the grass. I'm hot on their tails. They're making for the giant tree. They fly up the trunk, clacking and squawking. I leap against the bark, panting and straining as they scurry up into the leafy branches. No doubt headed for the squirrel house to continue their fight. Good riddance, I bark. Whew, that was tiring work. I curl up along one of the tree's big roots in the cool, refreshing shade. I'm about to doze off when I hear a wonderful creaking sound. I lift my head. The side gate is opening. Whoopee, I find, finally. Dogs are coming to play. I jump up and bolt over. But what I see are not dogs. It's way more exciting. Hattie and Angel. They're wearing matching caps with long tails of hair swinging in the back. And they have a fat glove on one hand. Hooray, hooray. I dash through the grass, my tail wagging out of control. I'm so happy to see you, I bark, jumping and pawing their legs. I knew you'd come back. Hattie and Angel exchange quick glances. Get off, Fenway, Hattie snaps, her voice wavering and hesitant. She must be wondering if Angel will threaten our fun. I fling myself at her knees. Don't worry, Hattie, I bark. We can all play together. It'll be awesome. She sneaks another knowing look at Angel, who raises an eyebrow. What could that be about? Fenway, sit, stay, Hattie says, pointing at the fence. What does she want to show me? I zip over there and root around in the dirt. Could there be a stick she wants me to snag? Whatever it is, I don't have time to find out. Angel is loping through the grass. Hattie's charging in the opposite direction, punching her glove. This can only mean one thing, playtime. Yippee, I sprint over to Hattie. Angel flips a white ball high up into the air. It falls back down in her glove with a thump. She looks over at us. Ready? I'm so ready. I'm so ready, I bark. I leap, I twist. I have never been more ready. Hattie holds out her glove. The ball goes soaring through the air. It bounces on the ground behind her and rolls into the bushes. Wowee, fetch is one of my favorite games. I take off after it. Fenway, sh Hattie shouts, and the chase is on. I squeeze under the bush with Hattie's arm right behind me. Ha, this is too easy. I'm about to snatch it, but Hattie's hand gets there first. Hey, I'm supposed to fetch the ball. I bark, hurrying after her as she jogs back with the prize. Hattie winds up and throws the ball. I'm after it like a shot. Nothing can stop me from snagging it this time, even though Angel is standing right where the ball is headed. Talk about an unfair advantage. Angel jumps up, waving her glove. The ball sails over her head and lands with a plunk in a cluster of flowers near the fence. She tears after it. I'm close behind. Fenway, stop, Hattie yells. Panting wildly, I, I arrive at the flowers just as Angel plucks the ball off the ground. Foiled again. She charges past me, clutching it in her fat glove. I sprint after her, lunging for her arm. No fair, no fair, I bark. Without breaking stride, Angel hurries the ball toward the porch. Hattie is already there, bouncing on her toes. Another huge head start. I bolt through the grass, my sides heaving. I've got to beat Hattie to that ball. She swipes her glove at it, but the ball whizzes right on by. It plops near the porch and rolls under the bottom step. Hattie's shoulders deflate. With a loud sigh, she jogs after it. Ha, I'm there first. You won't win this time, I bark. It's the most fun ever. Fenway, no, she cries as my teeth sink into the ball. She lunges for me. But I wiggle out of her grasp. I tear around the dog park. Fenway, Hattie calls again, racing after me. Drop that ball. I streak past the bushes and round the corner. I spot Angel rushing at me from the opposite direction. Fenway, she calls, waving her hands. 
clenching the hard leather, leather ball in my jaws. I was around her. Hattie's hustling toward me from the other side, her arms outstretched. Fenway, she shouts. I dart one way, then the other. Whoopee. Playing chase with Hattie is my favorite game, but playing with two short humans is even more fun. Every time one of them gets too close, I swerve the other way. I rocket past Hattie. I race away from Angel, but they keep trying to catch me. They love this game as much as I do. I'm excited, but there's no way I'll give up. I circle the entire dog park a couple more times, then realize the short humans are slowing down. Hattie is breathing hard. She glances at Angel, who is frowning. I slacken my pace, my whole body shaking with fatigue. I've dropped down in the cool grass and let the slobbery ball fall out of my mouth. Hattie folds her arms, her face gloomy. Angel is chattering, but my own panting is all I can hear. Soon I recover enough to catch exciting sounds. Clink, tink, clink from over the fence. I hop up and saunter over. I peer through the slats. Goldie is scratching. Patches is sniffing the ground. Sup, ladies, I say. They look up. Fenway, Patches says. I'm not sure if you notice, I say, but that was me playing with those two short humans. Mine and yours. They can't get enough of me. Playing, Goldie's eyes are skeptical. Is that what you call it? Yep, I say. I've got my Hattie back just like I said I would. Patches looks curious. How did you do that? It was nothing, really. I scratched a couple of times under my collar. All I did was save Hattie from the big brown truck. Twice! And you think that turned everything around, Goldie says with a huff. Of course I hold my snout high. What can I say? She appreciates me. Right then, the side gate banks shut and we all turn. Hattie is hanging her head. Angel is gone. So Fenway patches, says gently. I don't want to burst your bubble, but... What, Angel? Must have gotten tired, I say. Hattie's still here and we're going to play chase again. Maybe you ladies would like to watch? Pa patches makes a painted face. Um... Fenway, she says, jutting her nose up in the direction of the giant tree. When I turn, I see Hattie climbing up the trunk. My head drops. I hate to say I told you so, mutters Goldie. I drop down into the grass and lick my paw like that's the part of me that hurts. I hear Patch's lovely voice say, so sad, so sad.